So um, what you see here is what the starter screen will be when you open up the InVivo software on your computer or device. Um, this whole left section over here that's in the green, um, when you're using it for the first time, you won't see anything because you won't have anything there. It should be blank. These are previous projects I've worked with students. Um, this top blank project, that's where we're going to begin. The sample project, this is going to be a, a template to how to get started, um, similar to what we're doing tonight. And then down here, I just want to make mention that this help menu is great. Um, it has a lot of features in there related to um, using it like a, an online manual. And the tutorials will actually uh, take you right to YouTube and give you resources that are uh, directly linked to the software you got, whether it was Mac or the advanced version of a student version, et cetera. So we're going to go ahead and open a blank project so I can show you what the major template looks like. Uh, it'll make you name it right away. So of course, you've all saved projects before. Make sure that it's recognizable. So we're going to call it Webinar Project 1. This description box is uh, not required. I've never used it for any of the projects I've worked on. But feel free to type in there. You won't see it unless you actually check the um, properties of the document. And here it comes. So you can see at the top, it's what I named it, Webinar Project 1. Um, all of the projects you save will end in the .nvp, NV, meaning NVivo project. Um, and I have the NVivo starter package. So what you see here is your actual whole working space. Um, I find that it's very similar to Word. One of the owners and manufacturers of the software used to work for Word, so I think that's how the functionality um, kind of took place. This whole screen to the right, um, I'm going to exit out of it soon, but this is going to be the uh, information that you use to begin your coding and analysis. So this sample right here, this is pretty much just going to um, go do what we are doing together. Um, it just helps you get started, but I'm going to exit out of it because we're going to do it live together. It defaults to internal sources, so this whole left side of your screen is called the navigation menu. Um, it defaults to sources. Uh, every navigation menu in this left-hand side is um, titled um, specific to the functionality that you can use at this top area, which is the ribbon. Uh, all of these names, internal memos, etc., um, they're just in vivo pre-organized how we should save things, um, so these just represent subfolders. And I can show you down here if you click folders, it opens up everything at the same time so you can see where you save things or put pieces of your project at. So we're going to go back to sources. Um, so sources is where you're going to download or, or upload your, your sources, your interview, your transcribed, uh, um, your interview participant transcriptions. This is where you can um, save your memos or, or notes to self. You would have to begin by going into this data section of your ribbon. This is where the functions live for uploading data. You can upload documents, PDFs, and memos, like I said. And it'll also give you the option to um, bring in things from other sources, like EndNote, Mendeley, and RefWorks. Um, so for the purpose of this, we're going to um, upload a couple template documents I have. And I have some example interviews. I'm just going to click open. So it's going to ask you to confirm that that is what you want to upload. And if it's not, you can browse it again or you can click OK. So here they are saved. They are named just what I had them um, named as I stored them. So you can always change the name if you don't like the name. You would just right click on the document and go to Document Properties. And so you can change the name here, but I'm going to leave them as is. Um, I save them in a way that I can recognize uh, the people that I interviewed, so participant one, two, and three, female, that's their gender or male, how, um, how old they are, 45, 31, or 25, and how many years experience they have in their profession. And since I'm a nurse, uh, we have example nursing interviews here. I'm also going to upload a note to self, so it's actually going to be a template of the interviews that I did. I'm going to click OK. Yep, since there's only one and not three, it will actually ask me to name it. So I'm going to leave it as is. Okay, so you don't see it populate to this internal because when I uploaded it up here, I actually chose memo. So it should be here in the memo folder, and there it is. Um, so anything that you create or upload into here, um, you can just double click and open, and it will open up to the right hand side, and it kind of becomes become tabs of a chart. I'm going to open up everything I have. Just by double clicking. Um, this white spot in the middle right now where it says internals and previously where it said memo, this is actually your working pane. 
Um, so whatever you are doing um, when you're in this pane, uh, when you right click, it will be functions related to that navigation menu. So if I'm in nodes, which there's nothing here yet, um, I will, when I right click, I get different function options. And then so you over here, this is the tabs of the documents that I've uploaded. Right now they're not editable, and when they're not editable, you can actually uh, analyze and code and then attach them to nodes. But if you wanted to make edits, for instance, I've seen students who write the interview question out above the response, and then they, they realize later that when they're asking Vivo to search or explore for certain words or terms, and Vivo is unable to differentiate uh, the writer's words versus the participant's words. So um, that's why I created a separate document that has the, the notes to self, my um, interview questions as, as a resource. Um, so you can just click this button that says click to edit, and it will actually let you edit your document live. But you have to remember to get out of the edit feature. And so if you click home, this is where it's just like Word. It has all the same options that you can edit a document in. You have to remember to unclick edit so that you're so that you kind of freeze your, your work again.